Pediatric Behavioral Mental Health, Cultivating Resilience. Produced by Catherine Coughlin, Daniel O'Meara, Caitlin Blackburn, and Brenna Chase. Pediatric Behavior and Mental Health, Cultivating Resilience. After watching this video, learners will be able to distinguish among positive, tolerable, and toxic stress, and to help families implement strategies to foster resilience using the COVID-19 pandemic as a brief illustration. Topics of Discussion First, Defining Stress Stress is a fact of life. We take it with us everywhere. There are three main types of stress, positive stress, tolerable stress, and toxic stress. The first type is positive stress. Examples of positive stress include giving a presentation, studying for a test, or competing in a playoff game. This type of stress often promotes an adaptive response and is a healthy part of development. There is also tolerable stress. This type of stress can be mitigated by the effects of an adult's intervention and result in brain recovery. Examples include moving to a new school, losing a loved one, or experiencing a natural disaster. The third type is toxic stress. Toxic stress can be relentless and challenging. Toxic stress can occur when a child experiences strong, frequent, and or prolonged adversity, such as physical or emotional abuse, chronic neglect, caregiver substance abuse or mental illness, exposure to violence, and or the accumulated burdens of family economic hardship without adequate adult support. When humans experience stress, we tend to have both an emotional and physiological response. To modulate these responses successfully and to overcome the stressor, resilience is essential. But what is resilience? Defining resilience. Resilience is one's capacity to progress through a traumatic event using protective factors for support and returning to an emotional and physiological baseline. When children experience a stressful event, we want them to possess the resilience necessary to overcome the stressor. Why does resilience matter? Research shows that the prevalence of common childhood conditions, poor childhood health, and school absenteeism all increased with the number of adverse childhood experiences, or toxic stress. Fortunately, protective factors help prevent toxic stress, improve health outcomes, and empower children to grow into healthy adults. How do children develop resilience? A starting place is building protective factors. Protective factors can come in the form of parental reassurance, social support, or internal strength. Fostering growth in these areas empowers children to stabilize in times of stress, improving their own internal strengths, and learning to utilize external support. Resilience, this combination of internal strengths and external supports, provides a buffer between a child and a traumatic event, hoping to mitigate the effects of toxic stress. Additionally, the protective factors that contribute to resilience may not only prove useful during times of stress, they may also help a child to excel during stress-free seasons of life, so building protective factors can be beneficial no matter the individual and no matter the present situation. Strategies to foster resilience. So how can parents build resilience in children? Pediatrician W. Thomas Boyce, in his best-selling book, The Orchid and the Dandelion, Why Some Children Struggle and How All Can Thrive, provides the following guidance for parents and caregivers. One, providing routine and consistency. Two, parents' unwavering care and attention. Three, respecting the goodness of human differences. Four, unconditional acceptance and validations of the child's true self. Five, provision of a safe space while encouraging controlled risk-taking. And six, valuing play. He concludes that orchid children who are highly susceptible to the character of their environments have more powerful responses to not only negative experiences, but also positive supportive conditions. Let's explore the formation of protective factors. How about parental reassurance? What does that look like? Parents can offer encouragement and positive reinforcement, provide space for thoughtful discussion of children's struggles, and allow time for kids to ask questions. Anytime a parent praises a child for studying hard for an upcoming test, recognizes them doing something nice for another person, or encourages them to persevere through struggle, they are providing their child with a growth opportunity in confidence and resilience. What about social support as a protective factor? Social support can come from a wide network of entities, which include schools, religious organizations, community organizations, athletic teams, clubs, 
immediate and extended family, and friends. Social support can be divided into four subcategories, emotional support, tangible support, informational support, and companionship support. Emotional support involves love, empathy, trust, affection, intimacy, and encouragement offered by individuals and social groups. This support lets the child know they are valued through warmth, attention, and nurturance. Tangible support is the provision of financial assistance, material goods, or services. Also called instrumental support, this form of social support comprises the concrete, specific ways we can assist children and families. Informational support encompasses the provision of advice, guidance, suggestions, or useful knowledge to someone. This type of information has the potential to help children problem-solve, which can in turn foster independence and fortitude. Finally, companionship support gives the recipient a sense of social belonging. This type can be seen as the presence of companions in a child's life to engage in shared social activities. All of these forms of support can serve as protective factors to enhance a child's resilience. The Adverse Childhood Events Study has shown that childhood community resilience assets, specifically 1. Being treated fairly 2. Supportive childhood friends 3. Opportunities for a child to enhance his or her abilities 4. Access to a trusted adult and 5. Having someone to look up to were independently linked to better outcomes in adulthood. Last of the three aforemented protective factors, internal strength represents the children's ability to cope with challenges, to persevere through adversity, and to forge on towards a specific goal. Resilience during the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic is a universal stressor faced by families in 2020 and into 2022. The pandemic has brought emotional, physical, financial, and psychological stress to families, and the challenges have impacted children in unique ways. Children have been isolated from their peers. They have had to pursue their education activities at home. They have had special events, entire athletic seasons, and vacations canceled. Many parents have faced financial hardships in subsequent food, housing, and clothing insecurity, which has also affected children. We as adults have suffered. But think about how much more difficult this has been on a child with less experience in coping with adversity. Resilience can be an incredible ally in a year like this one for all of us. The unrelenting and unpredictable nature of the pandemic's effect on our lives illustrates the need to foster resilience within children and families before the onset of stressors. The volatility of this year's events highlights our need as pediatricians to evaluate the current degree of resilience children and families possess which can easily be ascertained from basic check-in questions at a primary care visit, and to increase each family's preparedness to handle stressful experiences in a targeted, therapeutic manner. What can we do? We as pediatricians can cultivate resilience by helping children to use protective factors to navigate through a stressful situation. For example, when a child goes through the loss of a parent, we can encourage the support of other caregivers, other social connections, and community resources to help the child to grieve appropriately and to return to an emotionally and physiologically stable baseline. We can provide timely reminders about the benefits of exercise, eating right, and getting enough sleep and improving our ability to deal with stress. Grief can be a long process for children. They often need extended support from loved ones, school, and even professional therapy. These supportive systems are crucial to ensure that the child has enough protective factors to prevent long-term negative outcomes. As a pediatrician, you have the power to impact the lives of patients and families and mitigate the inevitable stress that many face during the pandemic. Talk to the patients and families and assess parental knowledge of child development and the child's social and emotional competence. Help them to increase their protective factors parental reassurance, social support, and the child's internal strength. As a stable caring adult in your patient's life, you are a protective factor and can continue to provide support as you care for them. Thank you for watching this video on cultivating resilience in children during and after the COVID-19 pandemic.